Hi everyone, and welcome to part 3 of the Hero Quest Heroes painting series. In this episode, I'm going to be painting the Dwarf from Avalon Hills and Hasbro's revised Hero Quest board game. I'll be trying to match the character card as closely as possible, and so I should be able to broadly stick to the paints that you now see before you. There will be timestamps in the descriptions too if you want to skip ahead at any point, and as usual I'll be using two water pots so that I don't contaminate my normal paint water with the metallics. The miniature has been primed with a Xenoville Prime, so let's get to it. We'll begin with the skin, where I'll be using two thin coats of Katachan flesh here. You can see me filling it down on the palette now. You don't have to be too neat here, just try to achieve a nice even coverage. Next, I based the purple areas in with Nagarov Knight, which I didn't feel was quite dark enough, so I added a little black to it as you can now see. I'll be tidying up as I go from now on, like I'm doing with the skin here. I then added a bit more of the black to this mix and used this for the boots and the belt. For the hair I mixed our skin colour with an equal amount of black to get a nice warm tone. I then coated this all in in a couple of thin coats. Before moving on to the steel areas such as the axe, chainmail and boot caps, all in lead belcher. For the gold shoulder pads, axe head and trims, I used Retributor armour. Notice how I'm using the flat of the brush to pick out the edges on the base of the handle. We'll use this method on the tunic trim. You don't need hardly any paint on the bristles here, just let them gently run across the detail and the gold will adhere to the raised edges. For the rope braiding, I'll simply base this in some Mournfang Brown. With the base coat applied, we're now ready for some shades. For the flesh areas, I'll be using Reichland Flesh Shade. Agrax Earthshade and Non Oil in a 3 to 1 ratio will be used over the rest of the figure. We'll be being mindful of any areas that might pull up and we'll just soak them away with a dry brush tip. And with the shades dry we're now ready for some highlights. I'm going to begin with the eyes and I'll be using Vallejo's Ivory for this which I'm thinning down with some water so that it will flow nicely from the brush. I'll be steadying my arms on the desk and bracing the figure as much as possible when I'll then approach it from the side, keeping a good point on my bristles and just letting it run across the shape of the eye. You want to take your time here and repeat the process for dotting in the pupils when you get there, trying to keep them symmetrical. For the skin, I'll reapply a layer of the base tone before building up to Blood Reaver Flesh, followed by Night Quest of Flesh for the highlight. Here I'm just thinning the Katachan flesh again before reapplying, avoiding the deepest recesses as I go. We'll layer this up and subsequent layers in ever decreasing areas, drawing the pigment up towards the brightest points as you can see when I get onto the arm. I'll be covering around 90% of the skin here as I work. And I'll begin blending the Blood Reaver flesh with the base and I'll build those layers up in a couple of stages. Mm -hmm. 
This is now pure Blood Reaver flesh. Notice how I'm focusing the highlights towards the brightest and sharpest points more now, such as the tip of the nose, the cheekbones and the knuckles. I'll continue by adding some of the Night Quest of Flesh into the Blood Reaver. And this is now the pure Night Quest of Flesh with the brightest points. push the contrast that little more as the mini is quite dark, I added a touch of ivory into a highlight to just accentuate where the light would reflect the most. Onto the hair now, and I simply added a little ivory in a couple of stages to our base mix. Then using the flat of my brush to pick out the raised textures and focusing the brightest highlights around the face. I used the same method on the braiding, adding ivory to our warm foam brown base again in a couple of small stages. For the tunic, I'll be using our base along with a 50-50 mix of Screamer Pink and Pink Horror, as well as some Xerus Purple. Beginning with pure Nagaroth Knight, I'll repeat the stages that we went through with the skin, covering around 90% of the miniature again and avoiding the deepest recesses. I then mixed our two pinks together before adding them to the Xerus purple, again at a roughly 50-50 mix. This I then blended into the Nagaroth Knight, and I'll use this to blend up in several layered stages as we did with the skin again. This is now the Xeroys Purple Pink Mix, and you try saying that three times fast. To really push the warmth and depth of these purples, I then blended up the mix with increasing amount of the pink mix. I didn't ever get to the pure mix however, as that would have been far too bright.
With the boots and the belt, I simply lightened the base tone as we did previously with some ivory. You can do this in a few stages. This is my brightest stage. When it comes to the steel, I'm going to be using Iron Breaker and Stormhost Silver. Here I'm layering up with the Iron Breaker, being careful to avoid all of our highlighted parts now. I'll then be edge highlighting all of the raised edges with the silver, not forgetting the boots and the chainmail. I'll be using Auric Armor Gold and Liberator Gold to highlight the golden areas. Here I'm just thinning the Auric Armor slightly before repeating our layering process from before. following up again with an edge highlight of the Liberator Gold. We then switch to a couple of contrast paints in the form of Snakebite Leather and Space Wolf Grey, and I'll be thinning these with some contrast medium. I'm going to create a 50-50 mix with each of these and apply to some areas of the gold and steel respectively to add some variation and tonal interest like we can see on the character card. As I thin the paint it will probably require two coats but better that than obscuring all of our highlights by mistake. Whilst they dry, I'll apply some Astro Granite to the base using the Citadel Spatula tool. Before then reapplying the contrast to further darken the tones. Once again brightening the edge highlights when they're dry. For the gems I'll be using a couple of our base colours as well as Mephiston Red and Warpstone Glow. They're so small that any layering would be lost on them, so I'll simply mix each colour with a little black separately to start with and base the stones in, following the placement on the card. I'll then apply a layer of the pure paint on top. before adding some ivory to the mix and introducing a brighter upper area. Before finally dotting a tiny spot of pure ivory onto each gem. I'll then be washing a little of the purple and brown over rough areas of the base. And then applying some Skaven Blight Dinge onto the rest.
followed by mixing a dark brown black to draw some rough flagstone shapes onto the base as well. Then painting the rim of the base in a pure black and mixing a light grey to highlight the edge of it with. And finally we'll coat the entire figure in some ultramat varnish. And here is our completed dwarf. I hope that you enjoyed the video and enjoyed painting your own figure too. A full list of paints used is on your screen and will be available in the description below. If you did enjoy it then please remember to hit that like button and subscribe for all of my future content. I do hope that you all have a great day and until the next time, bye for now.